As I warmly welcome all of you once again, um, for those of you who have been journeying with us in the last couple of weeks, I'm sure you will remember the kind of sermons, what the Lord has been teaching us. The theme has been revolving around correction and about casting out demons. And the recent couple of weeks, we were looking at about how to force demons out. And last week, the, the Holy Spirit of God led us to go into a time of fasting and prayer for three days. And I want to uh, congratulate those of you who have gone into that time of fasting and prayer. And today, we're going to study about the returning spirit. So let's all turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 11. And we are going to read, I'm going to read to you verses 24 to 26. The words of Jesus. Okay. Luke chapter 11, verses 24 to 26. I'll give you a couple of seconds to turn your Bibles. It's such a, a beautiful sight from here to see some of you turning your Bible pages. Such a pleasant sight. So Luke 11, 24 to 26. The very words of Jesus. When the unclean spirit comes out of a person... It roams through waterless places in search of a place of rest. And not finding any, it says, I will go back to my house that is the person from which I came from. And when it comes, it finds the place swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they go in to the person and live there. And the last state of that person becomes worse than the first. God blesses the reading of his holy word. Hallelujah. My precious people of God. The title for tonight's sermon is The Returning Spirit. Here, Jesus is teaching us about how an unclean spirit returns. Jesus is teaching us that even when a demon is cast out of a person, it will not accept that. You need to understand the nature of demons. The nature of demons are such that they don't want to accept defeat. They are defeated beings. They are under our feet. You must always have that revelation in your spirit, right? The Bible says Satan and his miseries are under our feet. Somewhere down the line, even precious Christians can open up unwanted doors in their lives for demonic intervention. And when that happens, you have to put things right, my precious people of God. This is what we are going to study today. The returning spirit. Jesus is telling us here, when the unclean spirits come out of a person, it roams through dry places seeking for rest. And when it doesn't find a place to rest, it's so cunning, it thinks about the person that he was dwelling in before. So this demon tells himself, okay, let me go back and see what that fellow is up to. And he goes back to that place, searching for that person. And then, when you read especially NKJV and KJV versions, it says, it finds that person's inner being empty, swept, and garnished. Another version says, empty, swept, and unoccupied. And then what this demon does is, it doesn't go back in because it knows now, why did it have to leave? Because it was chased away, it was cast out. So it knows that when it goes back in, there's a high chance that it can be cast out. So he goes out looking for help. Jesus is telling us this demon will go and seek help from seven other demons who are much more wicked than itself. And then they will come back with an army of seven. And when they walk through that open door, the last state of that person, is worse than the first. So my precious people of God, we are going to begin this sermon by answering this important question. Why do demons return? Why do these unclean spirits return? You need to understand that they are assigned the task of destroying the lives of believers as well as unbelievers. 
just because you are a Christian, that is not for you being a Christian is not a license for you to misuse saying that, oh, I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian, so the enemy will not be after me. The day you became a Christian, the enemy started coming after you even more than before. Because now, as a child of God, you have greater responsibility on your shoulders as a child of God because there is a reputation that you have to safeguard being a Christian. Because the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 18 onwards, when you read this especially, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 20, Paul says that we are the ambassadors of Christ. How many of you know that you are an ambassador of Christ? If you know that you are an ambassador of Christ, you need to understand you have great responsibility. You have been assigned and entrusted with a great reputation which you and I need to safeguard. So my precious people of God, these evil spirit beings have been assigned the task of destroying the lives of believers as well as unbelievers. That is why Jesus says in John chapter 10 verse number 10, the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. And they take great pleasure in oppressing people. The nature of demons is that they take great pleasure in oppressing people, believers as well as unbelievers. Now, to prove this, let me read to you 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 and 9. 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 and 9. The Bible says, be alert and of a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Look at how the Bible is describing the nature of demons, the nature of demonic activity, how they function. He's telling, be alert and be of a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, pay close attention to verse number nine. Resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Full stop. Now, who is Peter addressing here? Is he addressing the unbelievers? He is telling the believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of demonic suffering and oppression because of unwanted doors that have been opened up. You know, this is a season where uh, I'm ministering to a lot of Christian leaders, right? to a lot of people who are on the forefront in Christian ministry, but my precious people of God. They are going through great depression. They are going through great suffering. Why? Because of negligence. Demonic oppression brings negligence. That is one of the biggest ways a child of God pays a massive unwanted price. God doesn't want us to pay that price by becoming negligent. And what happens is when demons get in through unwanted doors that we sometimes open up, we pay a massive price because of negligence. Let's, let me read verse number nine again. Resist him standing in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. So my precious people of God, I'm going to share some important things that you need to know as a believer about these returning spirits. Unclean spirits, they return. I've shared this many times before when you read the New Testament. The ministry of deliverance started off with Jesus. You find demons, you find unclean spirits, and you find evil spirit. So these are the main three categories of evil spirit beings we find in the New Testament. And just because you are a Christian, you are not exempted from going through demonic oppression if you don't walk with the Holy Spirit. If you don't keep your inner being filled with the Holy Spirit, and if you don't keep your inner being filled with the Word of God, remember what Jesus says in Luke 11, 24, what Jesus said was, when the demon comes back to the place where it left, it finds the place empty, swept, and unoccupied. When it's unoccupied with the Word of God, then my precious people of God, you have nothing to fight demons with. Do you know why God has given us this, the Bible? One of the reasons is to fight the enemy. This is why 
Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12, your fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. Your fight is against spiritual principles, principalities. Therefore, how you and I fight spiritual principalities is from the word of God. So Christians can also very well come under demonic oppression. And like I said, this is a season where I'm ministering to quite a lot of Christians. Leaders, those who are in the forefront, ministering to others. But a lot has to be done. A lot of cleaning up has to be done. A lot of cleansing has to be done. Because over the time they have got carried away doing the work of the ministry and neglecting. No, they are, they are focusing on the front. They are focusing on what is ahead of them. But on the back. There are so many unknown things. This is why the Lord is telling that he doesn't want any of his children to step into 2025 with unwanted baggage. If we take unwanted excess baggage into the future, my precious people of God, they will remain as undone things. They will remain as open doors for the enemy. And God loves us so much so that he wants us to, he wants to help us by the help, by the power of the Holy Spirit to cleanse, to clean up all these unwanted areas. And how many of you are saying, Lord, I want your help. I need your help. It doesn't matter how well you may be able to preach. It doesn't matter how well you may be able to pray. It doesn't matter, you know, no, for, even for that matter, okay? Just because I minister three to four times a week, I can't exempt myself. We have to all make sure that we don't become overconfident because my precious people of God, we can't afford to open up any unwanted doors. So I'm going to share with you what the Holy Spirit has placed in my heart, what he was ministering to me about these returning spirits. Right? Jesus himself, we are looking at the words of Jesus himself. So I'm going to share four key areas that you need to know about these returning spirits. And when I say four key areas, in the in the second area, there are five points, right? So by now, if you know me, you know, when I say four, you might end up with another 20, right? <laughs> right? So number one, based on what we looked at from Luke chapter 11, verse number 24, based on Jesus' words, this returning spirit is a restless spirit. You need to really understand this about how demons function because then you will know how to counterattack them by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The returning spirit is a restless spirit. It doesn't take any rest in oppressing a person. This is the nature of the demonic world. Demons, unclean spirits, evil spirits, all these evil spirit beings, they don't take any rest in oppressing a person. Like I said a little while ago, they take great delight in oppressing people. So don't ever think if you leave them alone that they'll let you be. That is one of the greatest deceptions that some people have. Have you come across people like that? I have come across so many people like that. You know? As a matter of fact, I got a call from a a person from uh, Dubai today, you know, about two hours before the service, he was telling me about a person that person knows who has said they, they're so much into all this demonic activity, so much of demonic oppression, but that person has said, oh, if I leave them alone, they will also leave me alone. That is one of the greatest deceptions. Don't ever settle down in a place like that because you have been given the greatest authority above every demon out there in the name of Jesus. And if you ever settle down, in a place like that where you think, ah, if I don't do anything to them, they will also let me be. Demons will take that as a license to, op to oppress you in a way that you never thought. You will come under so much of demonic oppression then. You have been given authority above all demons. Luke chapter 10 verse number 19, Jesus said, you will trample snakes and scorpions and nothing of the enemy will ever hurt you. Hallelujah. But my precious people of God, we have to make sure that we keep walking right every step of the way. We are living at a day and age where we must be so in tune with the Holy Spirit of God and we must always take every step by hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit of God because 
When the unclean spirit comes out, Jesus says that it will roam through dry places looking for a place to rest, that is to find a lodging place. And the demons seek to find that lodging place inside of a person. So number one, this unclean spirit, this returning spirit is a restless spirit. So if you are a person or if you know someone who is showing signs of restlessness, my precious people of God, it could be very well because of this, because these returning spirits are restless spirits. They don't want, they will make a person so restless where God wants you to rest in God. Be still, like the psalm says in Psalm 46 verse number 10, be still and know that he is God. Amen. Number two, this returning spirit. Now, here is a very important thing that you need to know. They are intelligent. They are intelligent. There is a certain level or certain amount of intelligence in these evil spirit beings, so much so that they can think. They are intelligent enough to go back to the place it was before to see the state. Look at what Jesus is telling us. Jesus is telling us this, this demonic spirit, this evil spirit is intelligent enough to remember, oh, I was occupying someone else's place. I was inside of a person and this demon is intelligent enough to go back to that place and say, what is that fellow up to? What is that girl doing now? I was cast out, but let me just go back. Let me revisit that person to see what they are doing. So they have a certain level of intelligence. They are intelligent enough. Now listen to this, right? They are intelligent enough not to walk through the open door of the previously occupied place alone. Can you see the level of intelligence? Jesus says when this demon comes back, he sees that his previous occupied place, empty, swept, and unoccupied, and this demon is in. Intelligent enough not to walk through that. And they are intelligent enough to seek help from other demons who are much more evil than itself to attack, to come back and attack in numbers. So they have a certain level of intelligence. Demons have a different type of intelligence, which is a very demonic intelligence, which the Bible warns us about. This is why, my precious people of God, you and I as children of God, we need to keep pursuing God's wisdom day in and day out from morning till evening. You must be crying out for God to bless you with wisdom, to instill his wisdom in you. Because the Bible says in James chapter 1 verse number 5, at any moment if you think you lack wisdom, you can turn to God and ask for wisdom and he will give you. Proverbs chapter 2 verse number 6 says that wisdom comes from God and understanding proceeds from the throne room of his grace. So my precious people of God, if we are filled with God's wisdom, then we can outsmart demonic intelligence. They are so shrewd and they work in very cunning ways. They are very sharp. They know how they got kicked out previously and they don't want to go through that again and that's, that is why this cunning demon, according to the words of Jesus, Jesus says it will go out seeking help from seven other demons who are much more wicked than itself. Why? Because when they come back in numbers, they can create a stronghold. Then that person will not be able to easily kick out because there's not one demon, there are seven. So seven plus one is eight. They have come back in a group. They have come back in numbers. Now they can attack better. They can now oppress that person better. That's why Jesus said the last state of that person is worse than the first. Let me read to you James chapter 3, verse 13 to 16. James chapter 3, verses 13 to 16, for you to get an idea about demonic intelligence or demonic wisdom. That is what the, that is the term we find here in James chapter 3, verses 13 to 16. 
who among you is wise and intelligent let him by his good conduct show his good deeds with the gentleness and humility of true wisdom my precious people of god wisdom that comes from above wisdom that comes from god himself is full of humility and gentleness and the bible tells us that wisdom will be demonstrated through our conduct verse number 14 but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be arrogant. As a result, be in defiance of the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Can you see how the Bible is describing demonic wisdom? Demonic wisdom will be very arrogant, selfish ambition. It is full of jealousy. And when a person is led with all this pride, jealousy, and all that, my precious people of God, even demons can enter through things like that. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder. There is disorder that is unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing and morally degrading practice. Can you see what the Bible is telling us in verse number 16? For where there is jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there is disorder. My precious people of God, sometimes you may find precious Christians. On the outwards, they seem to be okay, but little do you know that inside of them, things are in so much of disorder. It's chaos inside of them. This is why the Holy Spirit of God, who knows the, the true condition of each and every child of God, He wants to help. But my precious people of God, the important question you need to ask is, are you willing to cooperate with the Holy Spirit? These demons, they are intelligent enough. Now, please listen to this, the next point. They are intelligent enough to know the real authority you have in Christ. Now, there are so many people in this service here right now. In the, in, the, in the realm of the spirit, in the demonic realm, demons know the real authority I have in Christ. Demons know the real authority, for example, Luke has. Demon, demons know the real authority that Neil has in Christ. And they function to attack us accordingly. They get together in numbers to come against us because they have an awareness. That intelligence they have gives them an awareness of the real authority we have in Christ. This is why we must never neglect the word of God. This is why you must never neglect your alone time, your quiet time with the precious Holy Spirit. Every single day, this is why my precious people of God, I have been telling you for the last so many years, spend time, give God the best part of the day. Unless otherwise, you will not become powerful. Demons are intelligent enough to know the real authority you have in Christ. I'm going to read to you Acts chapter 19, verses 11 to 16. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 to 16. I believe we all know this about, how, about the Jewish priest called Sceva, who had seven sons and their fate. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 to 16. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jews, Jewish exorcists, took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. And also there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest, who did so. Verse 15, And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Look at verse number 16. Then the man in whom the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. I get a bit tired when I read verse number 16 also, because you have to drag some words. Then the man in whom the evil spirit was lived on them, overpowered them, prevailed against them, and 
leaped on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Can you see the state? Look at what the demon said. Verse number 15. The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, also I know that he's a spirit-filled man. And this evil spirit was looking at the sons of Sceva and said, Who on earth are you? In other words, the evil spirit was telling, I know who, who Jesus is. I know he is, the, he is the son of God. I know this Paul. I know he's a very spirit-filled man. I know I can't go against him because he's living in the word of God. He's full of the power of the Holy Spirit. But who are you, my precious people of God? Demons have a, a type of intelligence which they have, which gives them an awareness of the real spiritual authority each and every one of us have. This is why Jesus said, says in Matthew 17 verse 21, what does Jesus tell his disciples when they were not able to cast out that epileptic spirit? When Jesus was up in the Mount of Transfiguration, there's a dad who brought his son to his disciples who were remaining at the foot of the mountain saying, please, can you deliver my son? They were not able to do that. And when Jesus came down, Jesus delivered that boy. And then the disciples took Jesus to a side and said, Lord, why couldn't we do it? What did Jesus say? Two things Jesus said. One, number one, because of your unbelief. Number two, Jesus said, in verse number 21, he said, these kind of demons will not leave unless you fast and pray. This is why, my precious people of God, when you fast and pray, you force demons out. Those of you who were here last week, if you were not here, please, that uh, teaching is there in the YouTube channel, please listen to it. It will be a blessing for you. So remember, they are intelligent enough to know the real authority that you have in Christ. This is why every single day, the more you spend time in the word of God, you grow in the authority. You grow in real authority in Christ. The more you pray, the more you spend time on your knees in the word of God, seeking the presence of God. Then here is another important one. Demons are intelligent enough to know when a person is overdoing something without spending time with God. Demons love when a person is overdoing something. Overdoing, do you know that overdoing can become very costly? Overdoing anything for that matter. Eh? It could be that, you know, you, you may be a person who is overdoing things at your work, at your workplace. You could be a person who is overdoing ministry, neglecting so many things, neglecting your family, neglecting your quiet time. You know, the, the, these couple of weeks, the precious Christians that I'm, I've been counseling, several of them, they are in this category. So busy, overdoing so much of things in ministry, but yet neglecting the most important, crucial areas in their lives. This is why Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 5, your first ministry, my first ministry, your first church, my first church, is your family, is my family. He says, if a man does not know how to look after his family, how can he look after the church of God? So my precious people of God never get trapped in this trap of the enemy that is called overdoing. In order for you to fall into this trap, the enemy must first send you the bait. He must first show you a bait and unless you take the bait, you can't fall into the trap the enemy has. So my precious people of God, don't, you must discern everything that comes your way and ask the Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, is this from you? Is this a door that you want me to walk through? Because demons wait for a child of God to start overdoing things that God doesn't want them. Do you know that God doesn't want any of his children to, do, to overdo anything? For example, we see God himself resting. He performed creation from day one to day six, the Bible says, day seven. God rested. 
demons enjoy when a person is overdoing because overdoing can become costly because overdoing can bring this disastrous thing called negligence and sometimes we might neglect our time with the lord 1 timothy chapter 3 verse number 5 we might neglect our families we might neglect our marriages we might neglect our children we might neglect my precious people of god's our health sometimes you know my i can remember there was one day i was having a, a coffee a couple of years ago with my previous pastor pastor raj and he was telling me how god corrected him saying you are overdoing so much in ministry but you are neglecting your health and he said the moment i heard that i if pastor raj said i went to a gym and got a gym membership we can get carried away sometimes i pray that he is still continuing that gym membership <laughs> right so these things can happen these things can happen you know we get so occupied with our daily things that we do that even without our knowledge we get into that place where we are over depending how many of you know that jesus didn't overdo anything jesus at the age of 30 luke 323 says that jesus started his public ministry right and jesus ended his public ministry by going up to the cross right in the interim from the starting point up until the finishing line Jesus never overdid anything. Let me give you a couple of examples, right? In Matthew chapter 4, verse number 1, Jesus is led into the wilderness to fast and pray for 40 days and 40 nights, right? With that infilling, Jesus went all the way up to the end of Matthew chapter 7. For example, Jesus first started his you know, he he is he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights the immediate thing that happened next was he overcame the three temptations of the devil after that he started his galilean ministry after that he selected his first four disciples peter andrew james and john right and after that he healed a great multitudes in in galilee and after that we come to matthew chapter 5 in matthew chapter 5 jesus starts off by teaching about the beatitudes then he teaches about how how christ fulfills the law how we are the salt and the light then he goes on explaining about the importance of marriage about murder how murder and adultery begins in our hearts then he goes on to matthew chapter 6 he teaches about how it's important to please only god by praying unto god not to show show off and how to fast and to please him then he goes on to matthew chapter 7 teaches us about not judging seeking knocking and uh, asking from god then he teaches about how to walk through the narrow gate in verse number 13 then in verse number 15 in matthew chapter 7 he teaches us about false prophets coming into all the way to matthew chapter uh, 7 verse number 24 jesus tells us about a beautiful teaching about how we need to keep spending time in the presence of god and in the end of matthew chapter 7 jesus takes a prayer break because matthew chapter 8 verse number 1 tells us that jesus came down from a mountain so from that infilling that jesus had in matthew chapter 4 verse number 1 where jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights he went only up until the end of matthew chapter 7 Matthew chapter 8 tells us Jesus came down from a mountain and Jesus didn't go up on a mountain because how many of you know that whenever Jesus went up on a mountain he meant business and what is that business spending time in the father's presence in the presence of his heavenly father so Jesus then comes down from a mountain in Matthew chapter 8 verse number 1 and then the next thing he does is he cleanses the leper and after that he heals the centurion's servant Then he goes to Peter's house and he heals the uh, Peter's mother-in-law like that from Matthew chapter 8 he goes all the way up to end of Matthew chapter 9 again Jesus takes a break he didn't overdo anything Matthew chapter 10 verse number 1 the bible tells us again Jesus came down from a mountain and this time when he came down from the mountain up in the mountain he was praying and asking God telling God show me the right disciples to select when he came down from the mountain he chose the rest of the disciples so can you see how jesus didn't overdo anything 
even when it came to the last point, final moments, he prayed again in the Garden of Gethsemane. So my precious people of God, overdoing, if we get used to a habit of overdoing anything, that will result in negligence which is very costly. Which is very costly. I had a pastor who spoke to me not too long ago and said, Oh, I wish I had spent enough time with my children when they were growing up. Because I was so focused on preaching, I was so focused on coming up with my Sunday sermons, and I was neglecting my children. Overdoing, overdoing. It doesn't have to be ministry. It can be anything. It can be at your workplace. You may be a person who goes to your office at 8, and you, you come back home the following morning at 8. My precious people of God, you need to take, if you are the person like that, you need to take matters so seriously because God does not want you to overdo anything. It will cost you in terrible ways. It can cost you your marriage. It can cost you your children. It can cost you your health. It can cost you your relationship with the Holy Spirit because you are too occupied doing so many things and you are neglecting the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is now dormant in you. So my precious people of God, remember without an infilling, there is no outpouring. If we don't have that infilling, how can we pour out? This is why Jesus, he leads by example and he shows he didn't take his identity as the son of God as a license for him to keep away from having an infilling. That is why in Matthew chapter 4, verse number 1, he goes into the wilderness, prays for 40 days and 40 nights. End of Matthew chapter 7, he goes up to a mountain and prays. End of Matthew chapter 9, again he goes up to a mountain and prays. Why? Because an infilling is required. Without an infilling, there is never an outpouring. Always remember that. And my precious people of God, an area where Christians need to overcome. Now, please listen to this, right? This is why I'm saying this is because most of the people that I'm counseling these days, Christians are struggling in this area. If you are, a person who is struggling in sexual sin. And if you are a person who is in Christian ministry, my precious brother, my precious sister in Christ, take a break. Please take a break. In Christian ministry today, we have so many people who are good at encouraging people and saying, oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. You know, carry the fire of God, but little do they know the real fire there that is burning inside of them. We need to encourage people also to take a break because if you are struggling inside of you, if you are struggling within, if you don't take a break right now, you will end up breaking someone else's life. Take a break now. Thank you for those precious ones who are writing to me privately here. You know, that shows your humility. If you don't take a break now, you will end up breaking someone else's life. My precious people of God, if you are struggling in these areas, the Holy Spirit wants you to help you to overcome these areas. Because if you minister to others, and if you are struggling in this area, little do you know what kind of a spirit you are releasing upon them. If you are into worship, if you are struggling in these areas, when you are worshipping, little do you know what kind of things that you are releasing unto people. The Holy Spirit of God wants to deal with the body of Christ because an unholy world cannot be won by an unholy church. How many of you believe that? That an unholy church, a world can't be won by an unholy church. The Bible, is, the, the Bible tells us that God, Jesus is coming back for a spotless bride, my precious people of God. This is the time for us to have the true holiness of God. And you are inseparable from the love of God, right? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And God loves you so much. He loves you too much that he doesn't want you to struggle in these areas. No, I, I can't share with, with all of you certain things what some people have been telling me in the last two weeks. In the last two weeks, I've met a lot of people, Christians, active in ministry, on the outward, 
very much active in ministry, inside of them, having real struggles, undealt issues, baggages from the past. They're carrying sexual struggles and you no, know, it's not a place for you to be ashamed because none of us are perfect. You are not perfect. None of us are perfect. That is where we serve the perfect God who is perfect in all his ways, my precious people of God. God does not want you to step into 2025 with all this unwanted excess baggage. Your ministry will not be in the, in the greatest potential. How many of you know that God has given you potential? And you have to function in that right ultimate potential God has given you. And all these unwanted things, what will happen is it will just keep pulling you back. It will keep pulling you back. This is why the Lord spoke to all of us last Sunday also. And he was speaking about how to force out demons from Matthew 17 verse 21 and said, go into a time of fasting and prayer because that will really force out demons because my precious people of God, some struggles, some addictions are demonic. Addictions to pornography, that is demonic. Addictions like masturbation, that is demonic. We have spent time and counseled people who have overcome these struggles. You can't sit down with a person like them and just say, oh, no, do this, do that, and you'll be okay. No, you have to cast out demons, even if that is a Christian. And there are Christians that we have counseled who have experienced victory in these areas, my precious people of God. This is why I'm telling you, if you are this kind of a child of God, this is the time the Holy Spirit of God is telling you, take a break if you're struggling in these areas. Before you go and break something else, before you go and break someone else's life. You know, I have shared this many times ago. You know, there's a, um, a, a worship leader that we knew in Sri Lanka. And because they didn't overcome, that person did not overcome the, the, the lustful thoughts. And a married man, by the way, because he did not overcome the lustful thoughts and that the, the urge, all the sexual urges that he was entertaining towards another young girl in the worship team. Both ended up in bed, which costed him his marriage, which costed him his ministry, and today is journeying in the secular world. Someone who was once powerfully used by God doesn't want to even turn back now to come back to ministry. This is what the enemy does. God shows and he gives red, uh, he shows red flags so that. We will not have to call an ambulance. God shows red flags for us to deal with these areas. Like I said, God is not, he is not judging any of us. He loves us and he wants us to do things right the way that he wants us to do. And God wants to help us. The Holy Spirit is called the helper. This is why the Holy Spirit is called the helper. He, God wants to help us through the Holy Spirit of God. Helping means even in the worst of our struggles. Your struggles may not be the same struggle, the kind of struggle that someone else is going through. But my precious people of God, in any beat, any struggle that you have, the truth is you need the help of the Holy Spirit. And He is here to help. Because people, you know, the, the Word of God has to be preached in a way, the way that it has to be preached. Do you know a lot of people are struggling today because of this? I read in, in a book of uh, Randy Alcorn. He says that there was a pastor in the USA. He was uh, entertaining lustful thoughts towards a young girl, right, in the ministry. And he thought, he repented then his thought. To make sure that his repentance is complete, that he needs to sit down with that girl and he needs to open up and tell her, this is, these are the kind of thoughts that I've been entertaining towards you. And he did that. Do you know what happened? That was a moment where the demon took both of them by surprise. That little girl also started experiencing, you no, know, she she got so overwhelmed thinking, oh, oh, this is what my pastor has been thinking about me. She also got all worked up. And result, both of them actually ended up on bed. Can you see how the enemy is making people fall in this area? And along the previous decades that have gone by, 
Christianity has had many casualties in this area. The enemy is waiting out there. Remember 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8. Remember what we have been studying today. Remember what the Holy Spirit has been showing us. The enemy does not take any rest. There are restless beings. There are restless evil beings who wait to grab hold of any opportunity they can to make us fall. So therefore, my precious people of God, we must never overdo anything. We need to have spiritual order in our lives before we minister to others. Always remember that. And it's always good when you know that you have a struggle to take a small break. If you know there is something wrong with your car, will you keep driving? For example, you are driving the, your car, right? And you see a black smoke coming from your engine. Not white smoke, right? Black smoke. I pray that you will have the revelation to stop your car immediately. Right? Black smoke means a fire. White smoke is okay. But if it's black smoke, that means there is great danger in the engine. So you will not keep driving, right? You will stop the car immediately. You will open the bonnet. You will try to put out the fire and you will try to find out what is wrong. And when you know what has gone wrong in the engine, you will get that fixed. To get the engine fixed, my precious people of God, will that happen within a couple of minutes? No, it'll take time. It'll need an expert to have a good expert look at it. So my precious people of God, when you are going through a struggle, a spiritual struggle, you need the expert and his name is the Holy Spirit of God. You need him to have a look at your struggle and you need to give him that room to correct you, to put things right. And let me tell you, there is no greater person than the Holy Spirit who can help you. And he will also use his people, his servants of God, to give you help. My precious people of God. Look at what Paul is telling us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 11. Paul is telling in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 11, for we hear that there are some who walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Look at what he's telling. He's telling, I, we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. That means there is no order. God is the God of order. And he's telling, they are just busy bodies. And if you don't deal with your addictions and struggles, my precious people of God, demons will expose your spiritual nakedness somewhere down the line. If you keep turning a blind eye on these struggles and from time to time God will keep giving you red flags because he loves you and he wants to help you to overcome but if you keep neglecting even, or even those red flags that God is giving you a time will come the enemy will take you by surprise when God doesn't want that to happen he will keep giving you a lot of grace showing you his love saying oh now it's time for you to get out of this, my son, my daughter. Now is the time. And you keep neglecting all those red flags. A time comes where demons can take you by surprise. Because the Bible tells us when it comes to the seven sons of Sceva, this evil took these people by surprise. Because the Bible says, Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them. So that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. So can you see how they were taken by surprise? The time is nine, eight past nine. So I believe this is going to be a two-part series. I have so much more to share. But because of time, we'll go into a time of ministry. And we'll break bread. How many are saying that this message is blessing you? As we are on the verge of entering into 2025 we need to do things right by the power of the holy spirit by his word and this is why the holy spirit of god is speaking to us in a way like this because he loves us he speaks to us because he loves us and remember like the the bible says in 2 corinthians chapter 3 verse number 16 
The word of God is profitable not just for doctrine alone, not just for righteousness, not just for uh, reproof, but for correction, for correction as well. So my precious people of God, hallelujah. Praise God for those of you who, who know that you, you need that rest. Yes, Sadra Buzinta Ladaham. You need to take that break. Some of you know you need to take that break. Take that break, my precious people of God. Before we end up breaking someone else's life, before we end up breaking anything else to do with our lives, take that little break. Rabba Santa Lada. And as we honor the Lord with this worship song, I pray that it will minister to each and every one of us. And I pray that you will open up your heart and say, Precious Holy Spirit, speak to my heart. Show me areas where I need to improve on, Lord. And correct me, Father, in Jesus' name. Precious Father, I want 2025 to be one of the best years of my life. That has to be your prayer. You must tell God, Father, I want 2025 to be one of the best years of my life. And therefore, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you will help me to enter, to step into 2025 without any unwanted excess package. There are some of you here, many of you here, who are carrying a lot of hurt hurt and rejection. The Holy Spirit wants to help you. He wants to deal with you, deal with all those hurt and rejection so that you will leave them behind. And you will enter, you will step into 2025 with spiritual freshness in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing Your praise, O Lord, O Lord. Rami, the Lord is saying that He's going to use you as a vessel to bring great correction to people. In the coming days, you will find yourselves sitting very specially. I see you speaking to a lot of men who are going through so much of battles. And the Lord is saying that He's going to use you to bring correction. You will powerfully speak the word of God into their lives. People who are living lives of double standards, the Lord will correct them. This struggle, sexual struggles, and whatnot, the Lord is going to use you in their lives to bring correction. And those people are waiting and they are prepared. And the Lord will use you. And the Lord is saying, the harvest is going to be plenty because the field is so much and you are going to be used as one of those reapers, one of those laborers that God is going to use in such a powerful way. Rabba Santa Because God loves your heart. And he's going to fulfill every desire in your heart, Rami. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Rama Tamada. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing you. I hear the Holy Spirit telling me there are there are several of you here, right? There are several of you here. You are drowning in the addiction to do with pornography. 
This is what I hear the Holy Spirit telling me. You are drowning in this area. And the Lord wants to pull you out. Just like he pulled Peter out when he was drowning. The Lord wants to pull you out. And I rebuke the spirit of addiction in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke the spirit of addiction. I rebuke that demon to get out of you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray that you will begin to repent right now and say, Father, forgive me, I pray, in Jesus' name. Lord, I bring this addiction before you and I repent, Lord. Father, close those unwanted doors. That very first time that you looked at an immoral thing, which became that open door for that demon to get out. Right now, begin to repent over it and say, Father, I repent. When you repent, that door gets closed. And those demons can't leave, they can't remain anymore. When a child of God repents, Hallelujah, Rabbat Zakadana Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Praise His name forever. We will sing your praise, O Lord, O Lord, our God. Those of you who have no control over your thoughts, your thoughts get carried away. You get carried away in your thoughts. Your thoughts get carried away to other people. Zandra Buzintalada. Your thoughts get carried away to other people, even sexually. We rebuke those demons that are making you think like that. Evil spirits can have a great say and influence your thought life if you don't close those doors. And therefore, I pray, my precious people of God, repent, repent. And when you repent, those doors get closed in Jesus' name. God wants to help you. Jesus helped that woman who was caught in adultery. Jesus didn't do, let any of those Pharisees do anything to her. They wanted to kill her. They wanted to stone her. But Jesus didn't let anything happen to that woman. The same grace is here tonight. How many of you sense that same grace here tonight? God doesn't want the enemy to put you to shame. And that is why he's telling us. He wants to help you through the Holy Spirit of God. Bring all these addictions and struggles to the Lord and say, Holy Spirit of God. I'm bringing to you what I can't control. Those things that are beyond my control. Those urges. Lord, I bring all this. Even these sexual urges. If you are that person, you have no control over them. Bring them before the Lord. James chapter 2 verse number 19 says, Even demons believe that there is only one God and they flee at the mention of the name of Jesus. And right now, those demons are fleeing and they are leaving you in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. As we continue to worship the Lord, you can get your communion elements ready to partake in the table of grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come to the table of mercy. Prepare me the wine and the bread.
start of worship in the Lord with that beautiful worship song. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me and he was re reminding me what the scripture says, that Jesus was tempted at every point. So there is no temptation that God does not understand. There is no struggle that God does not know because the Bible says Jesus was tempted at every point but yet without sin. How amazing to serve a God. Oh, hallelujah. What more can, do we need? We serve a God who was tempted in every point but yet without sin. That is why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse number 13, there is no temptation that has come upon you that is uncommon to anyone. The Bible says, God knows how much you can bear and with that temptation itself, He will open up an exit door for you to walk out of that temptation. That is the love of God for you. That is the love, that is the love of God for you. Hallelujah. And as you hold the, the bread in your hands, begin to thank Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus, for you are without sin. What a privilege, Lord Jesus, you have given me. What an honor, Lord Jesus, you have given me. To be your child, to be your son, to be your daughter. Lord, the entire world knows, Lord, I'm a child of the one and true God who is without sin. Lord Jesus, even as you were tempted at every point, we know that you are without sin. Therefore, as I remember your sacrifice for me on the cross, as I remember with a heart full of gratitude your body that you gave willingly for me and for my sin. For as long as I have breath in my lungs, Lord, I will forever honor your sacrifice on the cross for me. I bless your sacrifice. Thank you for your body that you gave for me on Calvary. In Jesus' mighty name, you may partake the body of Christ. in your hands the blood of Jesus still speaks the Bible says the blood of Jesus speaks greater than the blood of Abel the blood of Jesus makes demons tremble the blood of Jesus brings you closer to your Heavenly Father when you feel that you are far far away from God for anyone here you may be feeling that you are far far away from God the blood of Jesus the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 17 that he brings you closer Ephesians 2.13, the Bible says, God brings you more closer to Him by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for His shed blood. Begin to thank Jesus for His sinless blood. The one-time sacrifice that was needed was paid by the sinless blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your sinless blood for me and for my sin, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 5 says, the blood of Jesus covers your sin, washes your sin as white as snow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this new start that you have given us, Lord, today. And we remember with a heart full of gratitude all what you have done for us by your sinless blood. In Jesus' mighty name, you may partake the blood of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Let's all lift up our hands unto the Lord as we declare the blessing of God upon each and every one of us. Now I want each and every one of us to be mindful, very conscious about the blessing that we sing. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fellowship means talking to the Holy Spirit. And as we honor the Lord by singing the blessing, I pray that you will 
you will worship the Lord and that you will also fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of the Lord and the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Spirit be with you. May the grace of the Lord and the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Spirit be with you. May the grace of the Lord and the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Spirit be with you. May the grace of the Lord and the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Spirit be with you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and Amen.